we continue our study of Riemann sums, there are several useful facts that will come in handy moving forward. So let's take a look. The first one says that the sum, as k goes from 1 to n of c, which is just a constant, is simply n times that constant, right? That kind of makes sense. If we add, you know, 5 over and over again, 5 plus 5 plus 5, right? Plus 5. Say we did it four times, that would be the same thing as 4 times 5. That's all that's saying, all right? So that one's pretty self-evident. The second one says if we have a sum with a constant inside, so this is the sum with a c times a sub k, um, what it tells us is that constant can come outside of the sum, right, to the front, which we have seen when we were adding a bunch of rectangles, right? We did base times height plus base times height, and eventually we just said, well, why don't we just take the base out front and then do height 1 plus height 2 plus height 3 of our rectangles, whoops, plus height 3, um, and so on. So we've seen this a bit before, and it makes sense, right? It's an intuitive thing that we'd expect to see. This next one says that the sum, when we have when we have a sum inside of the sum, so this is ak plus or minus bk, we can break that up as the sum of the aks plus the sum of the bks. And that's just a property for adding and subtracting. So we'd kind of expect that too. I mean, this is this is plus. So if this is plus as well, it would make sense that we could rearrange that a little bit. Okay, so that's the first three. Now these last three are much different, right? This gives us the sum of k, the sum of k squared, and the sum of k cubed in these nice finite sums, right? So for instance, the sum of k is n times n plus 1 all over 2. So you may say, I don't know about this formula. This looks a little cumbersome, but it certainly is a little cumbersome. And while that's true, it's certainly less cumbersome than sitting there adding by hand or by calculator 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 and so on. Let's, let's try out this formula just to, just to see if it works. Right, so let's do, um, let's do the sum. Uh, let's just do k equals 1 to 5. All right, that's a good place to start of k. Okay, so we know that this is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. Adding those up gives 15. Okay, it's a small number, so it's not, it's not so bad. Okay, now let's compare that with the formula on the right side there. If we wanted to go straight to it using the formula, n times n plus 1 over 2. Well, n is 5 in this case. We have 5 times 6 over 2, which is 15. Okay, so it got us to the same place. It's just a far more direct method of getting there. And sure, with something as low as 5, it doesn't matter. But when we start getting up into 50 or 100 or infinity, which is where we're headed, this really makes a big difference. Okay, similarly, we have, uh, you know, a formula for k squared, the sum of k squared, n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6. And similarly, we have a formula for k cubed, the sum from k equals 1 to n, and that gives us n squared times the quantity n plus 1 squared all over 4. And we'll do some examples with these two um, coming up here. Now, these formulas are used so often that it certainly doesn't hurt to memorize them. It's not the kind of thing where you constantly want to be flipping back and forth, looking them up every time. These are all super useful, at least for using Riemann sums to evaluate integrals, which is what we're doing first. Let's do some examples. Okay, for the first one, we have the sum as k goes from 1 to 50 of the quantity 1 plus k squared. Okay, so the first step, we know that we can break this up because we have a plus or minus in here, in this case a plus. We can break this up into two sums. That was one of our useful properties of Riemann sums there. So we have k equals 1 to infinity, or 50. These are finite sums of 1 plus the sum um, as k goes from 1 to 50 of k squared. k squared. Now recall that the sum of a constant added again and again is just n times that constant. So this first one is simply 50 times the constant, which is 1. 50 times 1, okay, plus, and now we need the formula for k squared. 
Okay, well, there we have it. The sum of k squared is n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6. So in this case, our n is 50. That's one real thing that you have to keep an eye on. Which is your n? It's easy to lose that. Well, the n is the thing on top of the sum, on top of the sigma here. That's always your n. Okay, so our n is 50, so we have 50 times 50 plus 1, which is 51, times 2 times 50 plus 1, 101, all over 6. Okay, run that all into a calculator. Turns out we get 42,975. Okay, why don't you try part B on your own? We have the sum as P goes from 1 to 35 of the quantity 2P plus P cubed. So pause the video, use the formulas for P and P cubed, and see if you can get that to come out to a single number. It will be a large number. Okay, let's try it together. Okay, in the second example, we have the sum as P runs from 1 to 35 of the quantity 2P plus P cubed. Okay, well, let's start by breaking this up into two different sums. And in this first sum, this 2 will pop out to the front because that's our constant rule for Riemann sums. So we can rewrite this as, let's see, we have how about 2 times the sum as P goes from 1 to 35, 1 to 35 of p plus the sum of p cubed of course as p goes from 1 to 35 35 okay and now we certainly want wouldn't want to sit there and add these up for 1 p equals well we certainly want wouldn't want to sit there and add these up for p equals 1 2 3 4 5 etc instead we'll use our formulas for the p sum and the p cubed sum Okay, so here they are. So when we just have P, or in this case K, it becomes N times N plus 1 all over 2. So this first sum becomes, all right, we still have the 2 hanging out here. Remember, our N is our 35. This here is N. So we have 2 times 35 times 35 plus 1 is 36 all over 2. Okay, plus, and then we have our p cubed, which we know becomes, when we take the sum of it, it becomes n squared, n plus 1 squared, all over 4, where again n is 35, so this becomes 35 squared, so you still certainly need a calculator for this, times 36 squared, all over 4. Okay, putting this into a calculator gives us 398,160.